Welcome to Sunday Talk. Today we'll be discussing Nehemiah 5, the freedom for the rebuild. We'll be going over the scripture to keep in mind, which is Nehemiah 5, 6 through 8. We'll discuss aim for change, which is going to be something of our major focus here, which is the economic challenges that Nehemiah had to face with slaves, mortgaging of land and vineyards, we're going to discuss briefly King Artaxerxes because of his significance within this book and chapter. But not only this book and chapter, but in the next book we will be going over, which is Esther. And it's really significant within this book and chapter because of Nehemiah's service as a cupbearer to him. So we're going to discuss him briefly once more. We're going to review that material here within this chapter within the Sunday talk. We will discuss the symbolism of the foods and drinks that are mentioned within this chapter. The grain, which could be wheat, barley, corn. We're going to discuss olive oil. Not only olive oil, but olives. Not only good for a salad, but it's also good to look into its other uses within the services of the Jewish people and what we continue to use olive oil within the services in the church. And it also has significance to what happened during a Passover as well, one of the pilgrimage holidays for the Jewish people. And it kind of correlates to what we see within Christian holidays like Easter. And so we're going to look into the symbolism of olive oil within this chapter. And we'll also look into new wine, which is associated with grapes. And we can discuss some of the things that are going on with the new wine and grapes and its symbology within this book as well as also uh, the whole entire Bible and what that actually means for us as Jewish people and Christians today within society. Lastly, we'll discuss uh, the new harvest, the feast of the harvest within the, the symbolism of the foods and drinks. And we'll go into how that correlates with the Feast of Weeks and Pentecost as well. We'll go into Bukurim, which is actually something to do with the first fruits. And that's not only good for the Feast of the Harvest, but it's also good for the temple with the offerings that you give to the temple. And as well as some symbolic storylines that we've seen within Torah and also in the rest of the Bible, probably living into New Testament living. So we're going to discussing the Kerm slightly here or two as well. And then the last topic we'll be discussing as a total presentation will be slavery within scripture, uh, liberation being supported by Torah, specifically looking into the books of Exodus, Leviticus, and Deuteronomy. We'll get those supports and claims, and we'll also look into the New Testament and what it actually has to say about liberations of slaves and servants within society and how that impacts what's going on within the storyline and what can potentially be seen within the rest of the Bible. Then we'll summarize and conclude like we usually do, and I'm hoping that we can gather some great takeaways from this chapter, and hopefully this will help us to ease on through the rest of the book of Nehemiah and see what this chapter has to say about the rest of the rebuild of the temple and what it has to say about the future of the Jewish people at this point within their history. So I'm hoping that you enjoy it. I enjoy putting it together as I usually do. And let's get started going into the Sunday talk with the scripture. Nehemiah 
Now we're going into our discussion with slavery within scripture. I pointed out some things within certain books that describe slavery within Torah. Uh, I chose Exodus 21, 1 through 11, Leviticus 25. They both summarize the significance of the servant and the acquisition of property. It also discusses the family structure that is then affected by the owner and the slave uh, themselves also. I go into Deuteronomy 28, and that is basically where we see a lot of blessings and cursings. We also see blessings and cursings within numbers, but Deuteronomy 28 is associated with service of the people, and it displays the obedience and disobedience to God. It allows for people to see the redemption based on all three of the scriptures that are presented within this point in the talk as well. So I encourage you to go back and read over some of these uh, passages of scripture for yourself and to kind of digest it from this perspective through this talk. Now we're going to go into the continuation of slavery within scripture. I'm going to read a commentary done by Trusnitch, and it's coming from the ESV Study Bible on the top right hand corner. And it writes, the nobles and officials within the Jewish community are accused of oppressing their own people, showing that the danger to the community comes not only from outside, but also from within. Oppression of the weak by the strong had been one of the reasons for God's anger that had brought about the exile. You can see Isaiah 5, 7, 8 through 10, Amos 2, 6 through 8. Nehemiah stresses this kinship in order to drive home the people's neglect of this great principle underlying the law. In his anger, Nehemiah brings out the irony of the Jews being redeemed for exile only to be sold into slavery by their own brothers. This is a good point that is being made here. You see Nehemiah standing up for social justice. He's seeing all the oppression done by the poor, the powerless, the needy, and those that are being sold into slavery. Potentially, you're seeing the issue of human trafficking occurring uh, so they can get finances here. Now I'm wanting you to go through the whole commentary that is right in front of you detailed. There are great references from Torah, from scripture, that could be parallel to what we saw earlier within this section of the Sunday talk. I want you to take this time to read over this. If you need to pause at this point in the Sunday talk to read over it, you can. Also, I'm going to give you some time to kind of do that, brush over it, kind of see all the description and get the clarity from the different scriptures that are referenced here. In continuation with the commentary given to us by True Snitch, I'm going to focus in on the paragraph on the very top. It's from the ESV Archaeology Study Bible, and it writes, This is the first indication that Nehemiah held this official post in the province of Yehud, Judah, within the larger satrapy of beyond the river. He governed 12 years from 445 444 to 433, 432 BC. Governors apparently had the right to raise taxes for their own use, but Nehemiah declined due to the Jews' economic trouble. Instead, he supplied sustenance for those who worked with him during this time, implying considerable personal means. 
the cuneiform business documents of Marishu and Sons excavated at Nippur demonstrate that some Jews living in Babylonia have become very wealthy. So it seems that this is the first time that that's indicated to us in reading. I refer to the original post that's given to us within this book, him being a cupbearer. But if that title has more significance than just cupbearer and it relates to the governor post that he had, then that says a lot about what's going on here, that the cupbearer had second in command or was in that second tier of command uh, during the time of the reigns of different kings. So again, that means that he was second in command during that time. You can see a similar uh, correlation with a character in the Bible like Joseph. Joseph was sold into slavery, but in his time of slavery, he rose to second in command. The interesting symbol within that story is the fact that he snuck the cup in one of the grain bags during the same time or during a similar time of famine. So it's interesting to see that symbolism of a cup in there. And if I'm not mistaken, that cup was made out of a certain material and it was silver. Now that's mentioned also within this story, 40 shekels for the tax, 40 shekels of silver. And so the cup is made out of silver, 40 shekels for the tax. It seems like the Bible is communicating one to another, or it seems like there is a cycle that occurs within the Jewish history. I want you to take a pause read the rest of this commentary here and kind of reflect on some of the ideas that are coming forth from this commentary. If you need to go back to the previous point of this talk, go ahead and do so. But take some time to reflect on the whole commentary presented at this point in this talk and kind of gather your own conclusions and own ideas and perspectives but mainly my conclusion and my perspective that I'm giving to you is that it's important to understand his position as a governor and God's anger to the nobles and officials at this time.
In summary, it seems that equality and welfare seems to be the major concern for Nehemiah as they move forward. If the temple's vitality is to continue, they must be able to maintain and support it. There is a hope of a better tomorrow. Despite the lack in what seems to be a biblical recession, famine, they choose to persevere into the unknown future. It is based on this that they continue to make strides to follow the law of God and the land. Lastly, the gravitation of the new harvest are shadows and is the dress rehearsal for the coming events in the New Testament. While it seems that there are several issues that set the people back from proclaiming God's message, it is overthrown by their persistence in action and meditation of his law and love and his mighty provision. And so if you're new to this information, do not be alarmed, do not be intimidated, and do not feel like you're inferior. This is a way to open the gate to understand who Jesus Christ is in all the scripture, the totality of scripture. We don't want to make sure that you're lost or anything. We want to make sure that you're found and you know who God really is. We want you to know who the Son of God is through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And we want to make sure that you have that relationship with him through the Word of God, which is seen through the Holy Bible. And if you're new to having a relationship with Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, I want you to pray this simple prayer with me. It's, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I acknowledge I'm a sinner. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died, but you did not stay dead. You rose on the third day with power and ascended to the right hand of the Father, where you are making intercessions for us. Cleanse me, renew me, refresh me, and make me whole again. It is all of this and more we pray in your Son, your Messenger, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. If you pray this simple prayer, you are saved. This is not a church. However, I would advise you join a local congregation, a Bible teaching church, sound in Holy Scripture, Holy Bible. Support them and make sure you get involved in that ministry, whether you are in attendance, you're a part of different teams and or music ministries there. Also, when you get a chance, pay tithes and offering there too. If you would like to make a donation to this channel, you can contact me with the email provided below. Now, I welcome you to the family of God through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. I want to thank you again for watching this Sunday talk. I hope that you can come back and watch another. Uh, Nehemiah 6, Nehemiah 7, Nehemiah 8, Nehemiah 10, 11, 12, 13, and moving on into the next books that we will be discussing here on this channel. Also, I might be adding different smaller subjects in the future. I'm hoping that you can come back and see that. Uh, please come back and watch and see the progression of this channel with the different videos I will be adding. I hope you enjoyed this Sunday talk as much as I enjoyed putting it together. Thank you again so much again for watching. Peace and God bless. I'm ringing out. Thank you for watching. Subscribe, comment, contact, ask questions. If you have anything pertaining to this topic, Nehemiah 5, The Freedom for the Rebuild, you can leave a comment and or contact me at the email address below. If you have any resources through books, websites, encyclopedias, textbooks, atlases, etc., you can provide those resources through email and the comment section below. I am a student of the Word and a student of life, so anything pertaining to the Holy Bible, Christianity, the early church, Jesus Christ, and the church today, and other topics surrounding these will be beneficial, especially when we're talking about Shabbat, the Feast of Harvest, the Feast of Weeks, Pentecost, Bikurim, the different foods and symbolisms of drinks, uh, the grain, the olive oil, and the new wine. If you have any information about these, please give me that knowledge through the comment section and also through the email that's provided to you as well. I want to make sure that I have all of this in order before I present this to the public through the Sunday talk. If you would like to donate to this channel, you can also email me where I can provide the tags to give those donations and provide the vision that I have for this channel and more. 
process for this vision is imperative so there is also room for critique as these donations are given. I am open to critique as well as open to the knowledge that is given through the comment section and through email. I eat it up, I take it in, I regurgitate it back out. I want to make sure that I can effectively communicate to you as I get revelation from God, as I put these things together. So I wanna make sure that when I put the Sunday talks together, it goes really, really smooth. I wanna make sure that this is done in a good order because God's the author of order and not of confusion. And so that's found in 1 Corinthians 14, 33. And I wanna make sure that's the case here within the Sunday talk that there is order and you know that God's in it. So please, Bring those critiques in. Make sure that it goes smoothly. Make sure that I sound okay. Can you hear me? Um, those type of comments need to be made here as well. Please let me know, especially that adds to also the knowledge and wisdom that you have about different resources as well. I'll eat them up. I'll take them in. I'll bring it right back at you. Come again next time where we will discuss Nehemiah 6. Also, I'm gathering information for the next books we will be going through. There are going to be Esther, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Jonah. With these lessons, there will be no complete chronological order. Hope that you can stay tuned for that. Thank you for watching again. Peace and God bless. I'm ringing out.